Welcome back to U.S. Farm Report this weekend. Tommy Grisafi and Dwayne Bussey joining us this weekend. A lot of news to digest this week, and we hit on it some in our news block, but we also had a lot of volatility in the stock market. Tommy, is any of that volatility in the stock market, did it spill over into ag commodities? A little bit. Something unique happened uh, on Wednesday. We had the uh, Dow Jones close at record, record highs, and the NASDAQ had one of its worst days in six months to a year. And, uh, you know, I watch the markets. I see NASDAQ having a horrible day. You sell Dow. Dow rallied a few hundred points above. Huge rotation out of sectors. The Russell stock market blew up. What's it mean to someone in ag, someone who has corn, wheat, beans, cattle? It didn't affect it that much. But as we come into another weekend, and we're all a little jittery from last weekend, you have to wonder, will we be paying a little bit more attention to breaking news headlines as we come in to this election cycle? A hundred days left to the election. I do think politics will have a significant move in agriculture in the next hundred days. Well, Dwayne, speaking of that, we did have a lot of news also in ag. One of those, we did see a large export sale, 18.74 million bushels of soybeans for delivery to unknown destinations during the 2024-2025 marketing year. A lot of assumptions out there that that was China, Dwayne. Yeah, there has been. You know, a couple of days before that, we had heard they were looking at U.S. soybean prices out of the PNW. Uh, it's six or seven cargoes, so that kind of matches up well. You know, normally an uh, export sales splash that size would rally the market sharply. But, you know, in this case, we're so far behind the new crop export sales that we our normal pace. It, it just kind of maybe stabilized the market, stopped it from going down, which uh, I'll take that at this point in time as a producer myself. Well, speaking of export sales being behind, that export news came out the morning following J.D. Vance, who's now officially the VP nominee for the Republican Party, stating at the RNC that he would be tough on trade. Tommy, he said, quote, Joe Biden supported NAFTA, a bad trade trade deal that sent countless good jobs to Mexico, end quote. He also pointed to tough policy on China. So with the potential for an even tougher stance on China in the future, could we see China come in and have even more buys in the coming weeks and months? You know, there, there's a certain amount of grain they need and there's a certain amount of people they can get it from. I, I, it, it's so easy to poke fun at politicians, especially when you've been in the game for 50 years. If you were broadcasting for 50 years, I bet you we'd have a heck of a blooper reel. The truth is getting politics out of it, China needs X amount of grain. And when they need it, they're going to come to us. Maybe we saw a little taste of that this week, maybe a little bit more to come. Dwayne, you mentioned soybean prices. We need more export sales. We talked about that with Tommy, too. But do you think soybeans have some weather premium still built in? I, yeah, actually, sadly, I think they do still because, you know, the month of August is probably the most critical month for soybean development. You know, in the updated forecast this week for the extended forecast for August is for hot temperatures. That doesn't mean it's going to be necessarily dry. It looks like about normal precip. But, no, we could still have a weather scare in soybeans. And, yeah, it's possible there's maybe... Uh, maybe up to a dollar still in weather premium in this market. But to Tommy's point, you know, China needs to buy soybeans eventually from us. And we are at a sale here. We're at a three to four year lows. So I, I wouldn't see why they wouldn't step in and buy more. Okay, let's switch over to corn because, Tommy, we had some amazing weather come in this week, cooler temperatures, great pollination weather. However, the corn crop isn't perfect everywhere. We've got some problems up where, where Duane is, up in South Dakota. We've got problems in Minnesota, problems in Wisconsin, problems on the East Coast, the South. I mean, more flooding this week. We have a lot of problems out there. But when you look at the Midwest, we are setting on a potentially great crop this year. Absolutely. We're coming into a large chunk pollinate. As you said, drought monitor maps were out in the last 12 hours. Zero, zero drought in the state of Iowa. Maybe if you're out there in your Iowa, you have a drought, send this picture. But we look at the I-State zero drought. The people with the biggest problems are screaming the loudest. The people with the best crops are shocked in the sense that they're undersold, underprotected. And as their bushels grow, crop insurance levels that protect that price are actually dropping. So the math of the have and have nots will come down to what's forward sold, what's forward protected. You better get out the calculator and if you're above APH, crop insurance isn't kicking in. Well, are we getting close to a low for corn? We're going to ask Dwayne that when we come back.